All right, good morning. We seem to be missing half the class, which is a little worrisome. But good morning to the people who are here. Um, hope everybody had a good weekend. Um, I finished grading homework three, and homework three looked really good. So, um, bash programming, it feels like most people, um, most people have a really good grasp on the algorithm for the stick game. Um, coming up with the algorithm, figuring out where you need loops and conditionals and stuff, is often the hardest part of, um, of the first assignment. Um, and so, so, so that's really good, right? I think people are, are in good shape as far as, um, figuring out what steps they want the program to do to achieve some goal. Um, and that's, you know, I think the biggest challenge in programming, um, certainly at this level. Um, most of the issues that people ran into were with actually implementing those, those intents in Bash. Um, and I'm going to make a, a general observation here. By and large, um, students who stuck to that how-to guide on Canvas that describes basic Bash constructs, most of the students who stuck to that got, you know, an A on the assignment. And most of the students who did not get an A um, deviated from that, right? Um, and and you can write if statements with a single bracket, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, right? You can write um, assignment statements with the keyword let, and sometimes that does the same thing as not using let, and sometimes it uses something different, right? Um, and, and I encourage you to explore different ways of doing things, but for an assignment, right, there's no reason not to do things the way that I've already given you and guaranteed will work. Um, so, so if you're in doubt, if you're not sure why, um, you know, when you enter a word instead of a number, you get a syntax error, right? Go back and look at your code and compare it to what's described in that, that how-to guide and play around with it, right? Write some code with ifs with single brackets, if with double brackets, um, and see what the differences are, um, would be my suggestion. Um, so, so, um... But the code was good, right? The games worked for the most part, um, the way they were supposed to. Um, a few people did not name the assignment stick, which I hate to take off points for, but I gotta take off points for that, right? Um, if it says it's gotta be named stick, you gotta name it stick. Um, part of the reason for that is that, you know, there's a good chance that um, when you move on to a university and you're taking programming courses, um, a lot of those assignments are graded automatically. Right, and and if your game is named stick with an uppercase S or with an S at the end or something, the automatic grading system doesn't look and see, oh, HW3, that must be the same as stick, right? It's just going to say, no submission found, and you get a zero. And then you got to, like, chase down the professor and, and try to argue, um, you know, that you submitted this on time and you should get partial credit and all this stuff. So I really want people to get into the habit of, of paying attention to these things. Um, so, um, so that, that was one thing, um, what else can I say about that? Um, I left you comments, uh, if there were deductions, I, I mentioned what they were for. If I ran code and found strange behavior, I tried to give you, um, copies of, you know, what I was putting into the program and what the outputs were to look at. Um, if you have questions about this, please, please, please come and talk to me, okay? Catch me in office hours. Um, that's going to work better than email for, for talking about specifics of code. Um, and let's, let's make sure that, that you understand this for two reasons. One, because, um, if you had issues with the algorithm, right, that's going to affect homework four. Um, and two, you know, we will be doing more bash programming down the road. So, um, so it's good to make sure that you're nailed down on that. Um, all right. Any, any standing questions on homework three? All right, any questions on homework four?
So a number of people took me up on the offer to check to see if their homework four was accessible. Um, and if your homework three downloaded fine, right, then, then your homework four should be fine. But if you wanted me to check, that's fine also. Um, how do you get input from the command line? That is today's topic. So argc argv is, is on my list um, very shortly. So we will definitely go through that. All right, I posted an online quiz. It's due Wednesday afternoon. Um, it's very short. It's four questions, and it's basically it gives you, um, you know, seven or eight lines of C code to type in, compile, run, and then put in specific inputs and describe what happens when that program runs. Um, there's there's nothing to figure out with this quiz. Okay, and I don't want you to be Googling or, you know, reverse engineering machine code or anything like that. I just want you to type in the code that's given to you in the quiz, compile it, run it, put in the input that's specified, and then just report on what happens. Okay, um, this is a discovery quiz. The goal of this is to get you to sit down and type in some code, run it, and see what happens. And then think about it on your own. Okay, but there's nothing to figure out here. It's really just like a lab exercise, okay? Just follow the steps and answer the question and you get your points. It's a 12-point quiz. But I want everybody to have um, gone through and put this code in, compiled it, run it, and looked at the output, and then think about um, you know, why the program is doing what it does. So that's, that's posted on Canvas, and, and just do that before Wednesday afternoon um, to get 12 points. But it relates to, to fgets and scanf and scanf with one s um, and the differences between them, which we'll be coming back to and talking about um, throughout the week. All right, and let me let me mention the current ODP, and then we'll go ahead and we'll talk about um, about argc and argv. So the current ODP is ODP four eleven. Um, And some people have have already done this, so it seems to work. So temp read me 411. Don't do 411b yet. That's not until tomorrow. So ODP 411, you're going to write a function named parse. Okay, parse accepts a single argument, which is a string, which is also a car star. So the way you prototype the parse function is just like this. All right. This is also close to how you're going to actually write the function parse. Um, you're going to write it something like this. Integer parse car star and then whatever you want to call the argument. Um, close parentheses and then curly brackets to contain the body. Right. This is pretty much any name that you want. It's just an argument to the function. Um, it's got to be named parse. The function name's got to return an integer. The argument has to be declared as a car star. Okay. You do not want to declare the argument as, say, car input bracket 20. Okay, that's seg fault. Um, it's got to be a car star. And we'll be digging into that this week also. Um, so, so write your function. Um, and what does it do with the argument? It converts it to an integer if it can. Okay. So how do you convert a string to an integer? You use scanf. So, um, and there's not a lot of option in how you do this. So scanf takes basically three things. The first thing it takes is the name of the string containing the characters you want to convert. So that's whatever your argument is. The second is your conversion string, in this case percent %d, since you're looking for an integer. And then the address of whatever integer variable you want to save the converted value in, which means somewhere you need to declare that. 
right? And this is just that. So we're digging into S scanf. So um, so take the argument, right? Run it through S scanf. If the argument represented a valid integer, then this variable will have the value of that integer in it, and you can return it. Okay, but it's possible the argument is not going to be a valid integer. The argument could be hello, right? Um, so so how do you know if S scanf succeeded in converting an integer, um, you have to look at the return value from this function call. Okay, so if you say something like integer r equals, this tells you how many things were converted. I'm asking it to convert one thing, which is an integer. If it succeeds, this will be equal to 1. So if r is equal to 1, success. The string did contain an integer. Scanf converted it, and the value of that integer is in this variable, var in this case. And so in that case, I can just return the value of var, because if it was a 1, 2, 3, or 4, it'll return 1, 2, 3, or 4, as long as it's 1, 2, 3, or 4. So now you need to check the value and make sure it's in range. If it's bigger than or equal to 1 and it's less than or equal to 4, just return it. Okay? If it's out of range, if it's smaller than 1, if it's bigger than 4, return minus 1. And if the return value from S scanf, this R, was not exactly equal to 1, something went wrong with the conversion, that means the string was not a 1, 2, 3, or a 4, that's an error. Go ahead and return minus 1. All right, so this is, this is just playing really deeply with S scanf. Okay. And you can't do this with A to I. You can't do this very easily by looking at ASCII codes, right? Because your input could be five spaces followed by the number three. Well, that's a valid input for three, right? S scanf will pick that up correctly and say, yep, that's an integer, good to go. If you check to see if the first character is equal to single quote three, right, that's not going to work. Um, let S scanf do the work for you. S scanf is a really, really heavyweight function. It does tons of processing inside. It's written by really smart people. Let S scanf do the work for you. Okay. Um, all right, so prototype for the function, take a character array, run it through S scanf. If it's a valid integer and it's between 1 and 4, just return the value of that integer. Otherwise, return minus 1. Okay, and this is obviously something that can be part of, um, of your homework for, right? This is the part where you ask the user how many sticks they want to take and they put in a, a response. This will tell you if it's a valid number or if it's an illegal entry. All right. So if the string is empty, if it starts with a non-digit, if it's bigger than 4, less than 1, if it has non-printable characters, anything funny about it, return minus 1. Okay. Use S scanf. All right. Make your own test function. So write a main program that calls parse with different strings. How do you call this parse function? Um, Easiest way, just hardwire some test cases. So this could be my main program. Uh, right? Just call parse give it an argument inside double quotes, and then print out the value that it converted. And then try it with, you know, 33, that should print a negative 1. Try it with x3, that should print a negative 1. Try it with 1, that should print a 1. Try it with, you know, a bunch of spaces followed by a 1, that should print a 1. Try it with a 0, 0, 2, that should print a 2. So, so play around with it, okay? Exercise your parse function. Feed it all kinds of different strings. I got a whole bunch of crazy strings that Assess is going to use to test this. So, so um, play around with it. Pass it different things that you expect you might see from a badly behaved user playing your game. 
um, and make sure that it always returns the right thing. All right. So if your main program is called main, that's your test bed, right? And your parse function is called parse. This is how you build an executable test bed. This makes a main program called main that you can run and it'll call parse and, and show you the results of it and such. Okay. Once you're convinced that your program works, then you want to assess it. So how do you do that? Link it in with a test bed. So the test bed is odp 411 maino um, Link that with parse.c, call the output odp 411 and then use your standard assess command. All right. Any questions on all that? All right, and really quickly, I put some demo code on the Linux server under slash temp slash stick that you can use to see what your program should do in response to different situations. So how many sticks do you want to play with? I don't know, two, that's an error, goodbye. How many sticks do you want to play with? Ha ha, that's an error, goodbye. How many sticks do you want to play with? Enter key, that's an error, goodbye. Okay, remember for this homework four, you only get one chance to specify the number of sticks. I'll play with 21 sticks. Okay, how many sticks do you want to take? I don't know, 66, ha ha, empty line, strange stuff, bunch of spaces. It keeps asking you, okay, until you put in a legal response. Okay, fine, I'll take two sticks. Okay, and it's the same gameplay as before. It takes sticks, shows you the pile, lets you take sticks, shows you the pile. Okay, I really want to take all five, won't let me do that. Okay, I'll take four. All right, and then the other twist on this is you can specify on the command line how many sticks you want to play with. And then it doesn't ask how many sticks, it takes that command line argument, okay, which is that 35, and it says let's play with 35 sticks. All right, so now you go through and you play and you lose. All right, and if there's anything wrong with the command line argument, the game's over, okay? You, just, you tried to specify the number of sticks on the command line, it did not recognize your, your specification, the game's over, okay? If you put extra arguments on here, game's over. It's gotta be zero or one command line arguments, okay? So all of that is written out in the description of homework four, but if you're not sure how to interpret it, if you're having a debate with someone about what it means, you can run this slash temp slash stick and see, um, you know, how it's intended to behave. And if you're really, really desperate, you can reverse engineer the machine code and, and not have to write the C code yourself. But if you can do that, you probably already know C. All right. Um, so let's uh, talk about... Um, ODP, let's talk about argc and argv. And this is going to tie into talking about um, strings in C, which is going to take us into the realm of pointers. So let's make a work directory. So you'll hear me say sometimes, write some test code, right? Play around, see what things do. This is what we're going to do right now. We're going to write some code to play around with argc and argv, okay? This code by itself, not particularly useful for anything. It's just a learning tool, okay? So when we write a main program and we want to take command line arguments, right? We need to specify a pair of arguments for our main function. The first is an integer, the second is a car star star. Okay, you can call these whatever you like, but it's absolutely traditional to call the first one argc and the second one argv. If you call them something else, you'll raise eyebrows and people will either think you don't know how to write C 
or they're, they'll think that you're like really good and eccentric and so um, proficient in C that you can name these things something else. Um, so it kind of depends on your, your attitude when you do this. But, but call them argc, argv, right? Because it'll keep it in harmony with everything else that you're going to see about this. So argc, this is the argument count. Okay, this tells you how many things you have on your command line. Argv is a vector of arguments. Okay, so if I if I dare to mix in some bash, this is kind of like dollar sign number. Okay, in effect, and this is kind of like um, an array containing dollar one, dollar two, dollar three, and so on. All right. The purpose of these two arguments, the first one tells you how many arguments you have, the second one tells you what the actual arguments are. All right, so um, let's start off with just argc. Let's just print out the value of argc as an integer, and let's just exit right there. All right, so here's my function go my program go. If I just run go and I don't specify anything on the command line, argc is equal to 1. Well, that feels a little weird because I didn't specify any arguments on here. Why is it equal to 1? It's equal to 1 because I did type one thing on the command line. That was the word go. If I say go hello, argc is 2. If I say go hello there, argc is 3. If I say go, this is a test, argc is 5. So with this piece of code, it's pretty easy to get a sort of visual representation of what argc is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Argc is 5. It's the number of things on the command line separated by spaces. That's all there is to argc. That's all you got to know about it. Number of things on the command line where things are separated by spaces. And it doesn't matter what these things are. If I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, argc is 6, because there's six things on the command line. Now, the one exception to this is if I have stuff in quotes, that's all considered one thing. So now I have 1, 2, 3, Four things on the command line, argc is four. So argc is the number of things on the command line, including the program name itself. All right. So argv is how we actually get to those things. We'd like to use argv to get to, you know, go, this, is, a uh, test. Well, argv is just an array. It's an array of strings. So go is going to be in argv bracket 0. This is going to be argv bracket 1, argv bracket 2, argv bracket 3, and argv bracket 4. So let's, let's look at the value of argv.
So I'm going to use a for loop here. I'm going to take i from 0 to argc minus 1. Because remember, arrays in C start from 0. So if argc is 2, this go is in argv bracket 0. Hello is in argv bracket 1. Okay, argc is 2, the last argv I want is 1. argc is 3, the last argv I want is bracket 0, bracket 1, bracket 2. Okay, this is just the way that, that indexes work in C, and it, it makes sense after a while. If I have five things in my array, the index of the last thing is four. Okay, so, so you may prefer to do this like this. argc i is less than or equal to argc minus one. which is the same thing as i is less than argc, but, but this may make more sense. All right, so for each of these, let's print out argv bracket and let's show the value of i, and then let's print out the actual value of argv bracket i. I'm gonna print that out as a string, percent s, I'm gonna put it inside angle brackets so we can see if there's anything funny going on at the beginning or the end. Um, and let's just print that out in a loop. So if I just say go, argc was 1, I guess I have to actually write these changes for them to do anything. So if I just say go, argc is 1, and argv bracket 0 is go. If I say dot slash go, argc is 1, and the first thing in our argv array is dot slash go. That was the first thing I typed on the command line. If I say go ha ha, argc is 2, and my arguments are go and ha ha. Okay, this is all you got to know about argc and argv. Argc says, how many things do I have in my array? And the actual array, argv, contains each of those things you typed on the command line. All right, questions about that? So, so somebody asked, what is a star star for? So this starts to get into um, the icky stuff in technical speak. Um, so if we say car C in the C language, we're saying C is a character. It's a byte. Okay, it's 8 bits long. It represents the ASCII code of a single character typically. Um, but it could be any 8, eight bits. So it's one byte. Um, if we say car star C, it means C is not a character. C is an address in memory. And so maybe C equals, you know, 148, and at location 148 in memory, we're going to find a character. Okay, that's what's going on. That's what we're suggesting is going on if we say car star C. C is a pointer to a character. So C is not a character. It's a 32 or 64 bit number, which represents an address in memory. And at that address in memory, we can find a character. And we use car stars as a way to represent an array of characters because the implication is that at successive locations in memory, we have more characters. Okay, that's the way C handles strings. Um, and yeah, you touch on this in 121. Somebody just commented after assembly language just makes more sense. Um, if you've done 270, you can put this in, in the context of um, indirect references, the indirect file pointers. All right, so that's a car star. It's, it's a pointer to, um, to a character. 
And this is a general notion. If we say integer star a, then a is a pointer to some location in memory where we find an integer, presumably followed by consecutive locations containing more integers. And if we say blah star x, x is presumably a pointer to a blah. Okay, whatever blah might be, car, float, int, double, okay. So suppose suppose we write this, and the parentheses are for us, not the computer. This is saying argv is an array of car stars. This says a is an array of ints. This says c is an array of characters. This says argv is an array of car stars. Well, we think of car star as a string, right? It's a collection of characters. So argv with a star in front of it pointing to a car star, that's an array of strings. All right, so get rid of the parentheses and change the spacing around, and this looks like car star star argv. That's an array of car star, which is synonymous with an array of strings. All right, that's one way to make peace with the car star star. You'll also see this done with a car star argv bracket bracket. Um, I never use that notation <coughs> because it's another thing to try to figure out, right? If if you do it like this, to me at least, um, I can interpret it as yeah, it's just it's an array of something. What's it an array of? Oh, it's an array of car stars. But the bracket bracket thing also works for different reasons. All right, so this this is really um, this is really kind of the whole beginning end of of the argc argv story, right? First argument to main is an integer. Second argument is a pointer to a string, right? Which we take as a pointer to the first of a collection of strings. Right, so it's an array of strings. And argv bracket zero is the first string, which is the program name. Argv bracket one is a second string, which is the first argument after the program name, and so on and so forth. Now, if if you decide to um, just kind of go willy nilly and say, well, let's just print out the first ten arguments. Um, to our command, right? So I'll just make a loop from zero through nine and print out argv bracket i for each of those, right? I get weird stuff, right? I get my first argument, which is go. My second argument is null, and then my third argument is this xdg session id thing. And then something about my terminal, and there's my bash, and hey, there's my IP address, and there's my name, and there's the terminal I'm logged in, and there's my username, and there's where my email is stored on the system. Right? So, so argv is used for more than just passing command line arguments. But for us, we're only going to use it for command line arguments. And if argc is 1, don't ever look beyond argv bracket 0. Okay, so I'm going to write this out as, as kind of a mantra. Um, if argc is 1, don't ever look beyond argv bracket 0. If argc is 2, don't ever look beyond argv bracket 1. If argc is 5, don't ever look beyond argv bracket 4. So in general, for any argc, don't 
don't look at Don't look at any of these entries in the argv array. You can go from argv0 up to argv bracket argc minus 1. Right, if argc is 5, you can go up to 4, but don't ever look beyond that. And if you do, there's a good chance you're going to get a seg fault. For example, if I try to use sscanf to convert input arguments into integers, and I bump into this entry here, that's going to throw a seg fault because null is not a, an appropriate argument for sscanf. If I try to do a string copy, if I try to check string length, any, any sort of manipulation on this thing as a string will throw a seg fault because argv bracket 1 in some sense doesn't exist. Okay, our argv array ends with element 0. How do we know that? Because argc is equal to 1. So here's the trick. It's really simple. If you're going to do anything at all with the argv array, check argc first. All right. If you're going to do anything with argv, check argc first. If you want to see if the fifth argument to your function was a double, don't just grab argv bracket 4 and do an s scanf. Okay? Check argc first. Make sure it's at least 5. All right. If you don't do that, you're probably going to get a seg fault. If if the person running your code behaves badly. And if that's me, I'll definitely do that. Um so check argc first. All right, questions on any of that? Yeah, behaving badly is your duty as a programmer. Programming is kind of a strange thing, you know, because first you write this code and you spend all this time trying to write it, and then you have to try to break it. You know, <laughs> and that's that's a little strange. Um, and I had a friend who who was making metal furniture, and um, she was welding. And teacher came over, asked how's it going, and she's like, "Well, I'm not sure these welds are going to hold." And the teacher said, "Let's find out." And she picked up this person's table and threw it across the garage, and it hit the floor, and the welds held. And she's like, "The welds look good." <laughs> so you kind of have to do this, right? Um, you write your code, but then you got to really try to break it. You got to put in all kinds of weird cases. You got to think not as the person who knows how to use it, but as someone who doesn't, or you know maybe as someone who's maliciously trying to get your code to do something different. Um, debugging is the same kind of of two sided thinking. Um, you wrote your code and you know what it's supposed to do, but when you're debugging it, it's because it's doing something different. So you have to believe that even though you said, you know, if I equals zero, do this, that something different is happening, right? You have to kind of suspend your, your rational belief in how a computer works and how C works in order to see beyond, you know, what you think you wrote and say, oh, I did an if I equals with a single equal sign instead of two, right? Um, so, so we have to play a lot of this. This, uh, these games with ourselves. Yeah, don't throw your laptop across the room to see if your code breaks. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's see, question, how should we use this in our stick program? So in your stick program, right, you need to do the following. You need to know... Um, you need to know, did the person who's, who's running my function say just stick? followed by an enter, or did they say stick, followed by a number? Or did they say stick, followed by a non-number? Or did they say stick, followed by something, followed by something, possibly followed by something else, right, with too many arguments? If they do this, then, then ask for number of sticks. 
right? If they just say stick and hit enter, then you need to print out, hey, um, how many sticks do you want to play with? If they say stick num, then use that as the number of sticks. If they say stick with a non-num, that's an error, you exit. If they say stick with two or more things, that's an error, and you exit. All right, so how do I know if they said stick and they did not specify anything else on the command line? What could I check in my C code? Check for argc, right? In this case, argc is equal to one. That's the only way that you know that they specified just one thing on the command line, which was the program name. If you try to do this by saying if argv bracket one, you know, if string length of argv bracket one equals zero, you're going to get a sig fault, right? Because you don't know that you're allowed to use argv bracket one unless you know argc is at least two, right? So argc is always safe. It's just an integer. You can do anything you want with that. Argv, you're running a risk because some elements of argv don't exist, all right? So how do you know if they just said stick, check to see if argc is 1. How do you know if they said stick num or stick non num, one of these two cases, see if argc is equal to 2. This case down here, see if argc is bigger than 2. All right, so if argc is 1, ask them how many sticks they want to play with. If argc is bigger than 2, that's an error. These two cases, argc is exactly two. So in these cases, you're not going to ask them how many sticks they want. They must have specified the number of sticks on the command line. So you need to pick that, that number up. Well, that needs you to pick up this piece of what they typed in when they asked to run the program. And this is argv bracket 1. Now I'm okay looking at argv bracket 1 because I already checked argc and it was it was bigger than 1. Right? So argc is 2, argv bracket 1 is legal to use. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to run it through sscanf. And I'm going to look at the return value from sscanf and if sscanf returns a 1 and I tried to convert this with a percent %d, they had a valid number. And that variable with the ampersand in front of it, that now contains the value of num. If sscanf does not return a 1, they had a non-valid number, print an error message, and exit. All right, and that's it for the new parts of homework 4 versus homework 3. All right, does that make sense? So I strongly recommend writing code like this and playing with it, right? Write, write a piece of code that just does this, this pre-processing on the command line arguments, right? Nothing that you're going to use, you know, for, for homework four, but just something to play with argc and argv, right? Something that can tell you, you know, I need to ask how many sticks, or they specified this many sticks, or they specified a bad number, or they used too many arguments. Right, if you can write the, the if logic to, to differentiate those four cases, right, then you can translate that into homework four and you're good to go. So this code's up on, on uh, the code source area you can get to from Canvas. Um, yeah, I just did it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, but, but 
use it as a guide. Go ahead and write it yourself, right? It's it's comforting to be able to write, you know, RC, RV, and the car, star, star, and that kind of stuff. The more you do it, the less strange it becomes. Um, so go ahead and write that, play around with it. All right, other questions? So let's um let's go back to our F gets and S scan F code. Um So I think this was the code we were playing with on um on Thursday. So we were asking the user for input. They were supposed to type in a number. We were using f gets to read that into a character array buffer. Um, and then we were using s scan f to convert it to an integer. And we were looking at the return value from s scan f. Okay. Let me just clarify once more. When I talk about the return value from a function, I mean this thing right here. If you say, you know, variable equals function call, the value you end up assigning to that variable, that's the return value. Okay, we we also you know are getting back other information from S scan F. S scan F is changing the value of I, but this is not what I mean by the return value. Okay, the new value of I that's not the return value I'm talking about. The return value is result in this case. Okay, and so if the return value is one, then conversion occurred, and I will have the value of that converted string. If the result is not one then this did not get loaded with a converted value. All right, so up here I'm saying car buffer bracket 120. Um, this is probably the next thing for us to talk about is this question of, of car star versus car variable bracket size. Okay, so, so if you've got notes on this from, from 121, you might want to take a look at those, um, but let's talk about that tomorrow. Um, and pin down the difference between saying car star and car variable bracket number. Um, it's a significant difference, and it's the next common source of seg faults. So we'll we'll drill into that tomorrow. We'll take a look at the next ODP, and we'll talk about how to do really clean input screening on uh, on integer input in C using a scanf. All right, so we'll play with that tomorrow. Um, have a good one. I'll see you next time.